Megan, glad to be with you today. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing very well. We're going to talk about women and, and the challenge that women have in retirement. Typically, women will outlive their husbands, right? Yeah. Wives outlive their husbands uh, by about six years, I think, is the math on that. Yeah. But I wonder, you started your company in 2008. Jones mm -hmm. Advisory Group started 2008. Great recession. Interesting right. time to start a financial company. Right. <laughs> but I wonder, do you feel like women are more attuned to the financial world maybe than they were when you started this company? 15 yeah. years ago? I mean, I think so. I think like anything, people, um, you know, we're, we're focusing more on making sure that we understand our finances. And um, I, it's not the old adage where, you know, the husband does the finances and the women, you know, don't. They have no idea. That's just not what I'm seeing. But I am seeing women get more involved, if not maybe even more involved than their husbands. Um, so I think it's really important for um, women to understand what's going on, making sure that they understand both the expense side, also the asset side, where are they, the investments, how they're taxed, all those different things. Um, but yeah, I think women are just as involved, if not more than the men are. My guess is you, know, you would not say that men and women look at money and everything <laughs> exactly the same, would you? No, well, you have that whole, um, was the book, Men Are From Mars and Went, I don't women know. Women Venus, I think. It yeah. might be like men are from Mars, women are from like a completely different planet we haven't even found yet in the universe. Um, I think the thing about men and women and their finances, we have the basic understandings the same, right? We understand investments, but how we feel about those investments or how we feel about what importance we put on those uh, investments are a little bit different. I think from a lot of my women clients, they're focused on legacy. They're focused on making sure that they're not a burden on their family. They're focused on making sure that their kids maybe are taken care of, maybe even their grandkids. And so we spend a lot of time focusing on where do we invest the money in such a way that we can make sure we can get it to the family or be able to use it for those types of purposes. Um, sometimes, not always, but sometimes when I'm talking to some of my husband clients, um, they're focused on return, they're focused on you know, exciting, what, you know, what kind of investments can right. you get me into, Megan, um, where I might be able to get a little bit more bang for my buck. And, um, and again, you don't want to paint everybody with broad strokes brushes. It's not the case where you have women that, you know, you know women stay at home and they don't understand the money. That's not the case at all, at least not for the families that, that we have worked with. Yeah, I would think things have changed. and I mean, it's only 15 years ago, but that's a lot can happen in 15 years. Yeah. So the numbers say mathematically that women will outlive men by about six years. The bottom line is you have basically worn us out, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think my husband would say that. <laughs> yeah. So my husband is four years older than me. So if there's a six-year age gap, that means potentially, if we just go by law of lar large numbers, I'm going to outlive him maybe by 10 years, if not more. So that means we better have a plan put together that's going to accommodate me being by myself, maybe. The f what happens if a pension goes away? What happens if Social Security gets cut? Because those things will affect my retirement income. Not to mention, I'm going to be in a different tax bracket now. So regardless of who passes away, you go from a joint tax filing uh, to a single tax filing, it's, you, you pay more in taxes. So I lose income and I pay more in taxes. That doesn't quite make sense, but that's the way it works. So we better have accounted for it in a plan. And you lose a spouse, the bills aren't being cut in half. <laughs> right. But right. you're going, as you say, you're going tax from you know joint to yeah. single. Taxes are going up. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just a lot of moving pieces. And, and this is a big part, I'm, I'm sure, of what you do when you sit down with people is you have to plan for what happens if yeah. you lose a spouse. Because very rare that both would pass away at the same time. Yeah. I think um, planning for us and what we do with our families, a lot of it is the what if scenarios. What if we have a health crisis? What if one of us passes away? What if the kids need some money or you know, we go into a long-term care facility? So these are all things that we talk about. And one of the things that we want to focus on is not just the bad things that can happen. What about all the good things? Um, you know, we, we have trips we want to take with our families. We have, you know, I'm I like to focus on the go-go years and making sure that our families can enjoy it um, with their families because they waited for this wonderful thing called retirement. Um, but the planning side is going to be so integral because, like you said, the likelihood is our families aren't going to pass away at the same time. Somebody is going to be left, and we need to make sure that the plan can accommodate for that. We need to make sure that um, the new income, whatever that looks like, can support the expenses and the spending that the remaining spouse still has. And also that both spouses feel comfortable about knowing what's going on, where are we invested, and the, and, um, the entire plan. And so we, we want to make sure we focus on both the men and the women. 
You know, and I would think, because sometimes you have a husband or a wife that's a saver, the other one's a spender. <laughs> sometimes they're both savers, sometimes they're both spenders. So the savers, you got to help them go. <laughs> go ahead, you take that trip. Spenders, slow down a little bit. But when you got one of each, how does that work? So I would say my husband and I are kind of that way. He's the saver, I'm the spender. I just admitted it. Oh my you goodness, did. I admitted it on air. Um, but I think that's kind of what we see a lot of times in our families. And you might have one person that's more aggressive, one person that's more conservative, one that's the spender, one that's the saver. And so, you know, maybe I'm more of a, you know, relationship counselor sometimes than a financial wealth manager, but um, we have to accommodate both. And so sometimes it means, hey, we, we need to put together a plan to, you know, maybe stop spending or you guys are saving all your money. You don't need to save again in retirement. So let's encourage some of that spending. Um, it's not all that uncommon to be on different sides of the spectrum. Yeah, I think that's, that's one of the more interesting parts of your job, I think, is just sitting down and learning about people. Right. No question about it.